Hello everyone, I am LilyMoo961 and today we will be continuing with the rambling about Nier Automata soundtrack. Today we'll be starting on disc 3 and uh, one major thing that I need to say before we really get down to business today is that in today's video there will probably be major spoilers for Nier Automata. We're at the point in the soundtrack where some of the soundtrack titles actually give substantial hints to the content that is within the game. And so because of that, I do want to be able to expound upon those things. So if you have not played Nier Automata at this point, I would encourage you to play the game if you're interested in playing the game and interested in learning about the story. This is the point where I would tell you, hey, go play it before coming and listening to me talk about the music in this particular video. I think we're in part five now, so <laughs> this is kind of the cutoff point where it's like, hey, yeah, no, if you don't know what's happened in the game, you best not be here because there will be spoilers and if you want a blind experience, then this will definitely ruin it for you. Uh, having said that, you know the drill by now. I don't feel that I need to explain. I'm listening to Nier Automata soundtrack and talking about it as it plays in my ear. You guys won't hear it because, you know, Square Enix can be a bit weird about their music and I ain't taking no risk with that. So yeah. So I guess we'll just go ahead and get started. The first track that we are going to cover very briefly is called Rebirth and Hope. Now, this song is a very quick track. It only plays uh, at the end of root A and root B since the two roots essentially have the same ending. So it plays in that little part where all the machines like that are on the ground that have been deactivated are kind of like activated and stuff. And 2B is all mad at first because she's like, it's because of you guys that I had to choke 9S. And well, See, I really do hope that some of y'all are taking the spoiler warning seriously because there, there's one right there at the end of route A and B to be chokes 9S. Don't worry, he survives, but it's a thing that happened. And well, now you know if you didn't play the game. So if you don't want anything else like this spoiled, I suggest you play the game. Okay, we're gonna move on to the next track now because there's not really anything left that I can say about Rebirth and Hope. It's a very like, simple kind of transition track and that's pretty much all it is so there's not really anything that I can say except that you know it's it's very nice and pretty for the 37 seconds that it plays and beyond that we don't really have anything substantial to say about it that I don't know why I said we I'm the only person here yeah okay yeah we're just gonna move on to the next song <laughs> The next song up for discussion is called War and War, or as I personally like to call it, The City Ruins Theme Version 3. The reason I call this track the third iteration of The City Ruins Theme is in part because of the light motif that kind of appears within this track after the first opening seconds. You'll hear male vocals, you know, start like chanting, and they're chanting the melody for the city ruins theme and this is also very telling of how the story is changing at this particular point because this song only plays at the point during route c where 2b and 9s and other yorha forces are in the city ruins fighting the last of the machine forces because adam and eve have both been dealt with and they're both dead so this is the point where this is like the last stand and Yorha is hoping to finally end this war and that's pretty much what's going on in the story at this point. And so this song is kind of like the theme for this moment because the war is almost over. But is it really? No. <laughs> and uh, the main component of this song that's really nice is like the instrumentation and the uh, switch between male and female vocals because the male chanting is going like through the beginning portions of the song and as it continues the female vocals take over for a little bit just doing like little chants in the background as uh, other parts of the City Ruins melody plays and it's just really good I love the string instruments in this uh, I'm definitely a big fan of how 
it's just totally reminiscent of the City Ruins theme, but because it's in a different key and the energy of it is different, it just has a completely different feel to it, completely different emotional tone, definitely a sense of foreboding is attached to this track, even though it has like this so sort of, um, you know, almost like someone marching into battle, you know, soldiers marching into battle, which is essentially what's happening in the story at this particular point. And it's just really good. It's, it's good storytelling just through the music and how the first City Ruins theme was essentially, you know, this sort of relaxed vibe in the sense that, you know, it's mysterious and there's elements of this world that you don't really know. So you want to explore it. You want to see it. War and War is technically the second version of this track that actually plays that you hear within the City Ruins. Because in Route B, you just hear the normal version of, you know, City Ruins, Rays of Light. You hear that version. And so in Route C, at the beginning of it, you hear this track. And it is kind of sort of a transition track between City Ruins, Rays of Light and City Ruins, Shade. And as I mentioned, City Ruins, Shade is heavier, even though Emmy Evans with her vocals is lighter. So this track is definitely showcasing a transition because Janique Nicole's vocals are deeper in the Rays of Light version of the song, but it still has a more relaxed tone. It has a brighter tone, the song overall. It's more relaxed. It has, you know, a more mysterious energy. And War on War, having both male vocals and female vocals within it, are kind of showcasing this transition between what was, you know, a more light and relaxing and just kind of mysterious sort of song, just kind of setting the atmospheric tone and what's going to become of the City Ruins theme where it's heavier, more percussive and all of that. So this is a phenomenal track to showcase the major changes that are coming within the story and even just within the music of the City Ruins theme. So great track. Uh, it's implemented extremely well. Love it, love it, love it. And with that, I believe we can move on to the next one. The next song we are going to discuss is called Crumbling Lies Front. And I'm not sure why the front part was added because there's not a Crumbling Lies back within the soundtrack. So I'm just kind of like, huh? But yes, it's called Crumbling Lies Front is what it is called. This song is... <sighs> Like just hearing it, it brings back the images of what's happening in the story when this song actually plays. It plays after, well, I'll probably end up talking about it in a second for the next track, so I'm not gonna discuss it now, but it happens after a big event. <laughs> and 2B and 9S are escaping from this major sort of tragic event that is taking place trying to escape back to earth and the credits play during this moment uh you see like different title cards of you know the people involved with the game like yoko taro and uh, other people involved you know producers and everyone that's involved in the making of this game and it is extremely effective because in essence you are still kind of playing the game and it's like, it's just, it's so good. <laughs> it's just, it's a standout moment for sure. And this track was also used for the, um, like sort of like the opening movie that will sometimes play if you leave the, the menu idle for too long. Like, you know, a little movie will sort of play and it'll have a different song at the beginning, but then this one will play when it gets to some of the more dramatic beats of that little opening movie thing. And, it's just like this particular piece just invokes like strong emotions out of me because of the story and like it's just good like the vocals are on point and especially there's a particular point I haven't heard it yet in the music I'm kind of waiting on it but there's a point where the violin's really just so good like I'm waiting on it <laughs> to so I can talk about it and kind of describe it because it, it is just like oh it's just good <laughs> I'm a big fan of violins, just so y'all know. So whenever they really get going, it makes me very, very happy. I may have missed it already. I'm waiting on it. I'm like, where is it? 
Yeah, I probably missed it already. Um, but essentially, there's a point in the song where the violins are going like, <laughs> and it's like it's really nice. I just I just really like that particular point in the song. Oh, there it is. <laughs> See, this is. <laughs> It wouldn't be so awkward if, like, you guys could hear the music too, but again, Square Enix could be kind of weird when it comes to the copyright with their music. I'm not taking chances. <laughs> but yeah, I do enjoy this song. It's, it's just a good piece that just invokes memories of playing the game for the first time and getting the uh, complete tonal shift of what the game had been before to what the game is transforming into. So... Definitely really like this track. The next track that we are going to discuss is called Widespread Illness. This is the song that takes place during the big tragic moment that I was kind of alluding to for the previous track. Now that we're into this track, I can actually expound upon what that is. So when Tubi and Ines end up back on the bunker after the operation goes wrong because your high units are starting to get infected by the logic virus they end up back on the bunker they try to talk to the commander the commander is like no y'all are sounding sus and we're gonna have you detained but then the other yorha soldiers around them you know conveniently get infected as well and then they start kind of chasing the commander to be an 9s throughout the bunker which throughout this whole time had been a fortress for the Yorha troops. So this place that was sort of a home base, though not really, <laughs> just gets, you know, infected. And you hear, especially if you do a 6 O's quest before um, you get to this part of the game, like you'll hear her talking and she already has lines that she would normally say, but there's a particular line that she says if you uh, do the quest in the early part of the game where she'll thank you for getting her flowers and it is just so sad because it's like because you know six so is just like a really wholesome character overall and it's a moment and just going through the bunker and fighting the yorha soldiers who have been your allies this whole time and then having to have the uh, script flipped on you where they're attacking you and in order to get out you have to just you know slay them and it's particularly interesting because of 2b situation which i'll talk about later but for those of you that already know what i'm talking about you already know this is especially telling of just the situation that 2b has been flung in repeatedly and just having like having you have to be the one because you're playing as 2b during this section and you're having to control Tubi and you're having to be the one essentially executing your ha soldiers that are attacking you is like a major thing, especially in hindsight when you go back and play through the game again and you know what Tubi's true designation was. That's really what just kind of like puts the nail in the coffin, so to speak. And you're just like, oh my goodness. <laughs> this song isn't necessarily one that's like super melodic or like super enjoyable in the sense of like listening to it on its own but in context of the game oh it's so effective so good and I can't say that I have much more to say about it but it is really good and I do feel that it sells the atmosphere it sells the tragedy of the moment and I think that's all that needs to be said, so we'll just move on to the next track. The next track we are going to discuss is called Fortress of Lies. This is the theme for the bunker, which is basically a fortress for the Yorha troops. And we hear this song very early on um, in Route A, we hear it in Route B at points. You know, this is a song that kind of sells what Yorha actually is. And I feel that the reason that it was placed on the third disc, where all of the major Route C tracks are, is because if they had placed it at the beginning, <laughs> for someone who isn't playing the game, it would just kind of like spoil things. But 
the actual title of this track really just sells what Yorha is. It is built on a lie, but it is a fortress and it is a place where, for the Yorha soldiers in particular, it is a place where perfection is expected, efficiency, um, you know, very militaristic. It is a very formal place. It is definitely not a place where you would say is a home base in the sense that you feel a sense of peace there. Even though this track is quite melodic and has this relaxing tone, there's still this edge of, I wouldn't say it's eerie or even really foreboding, but just something ain't quite right. There's something kind of off, even in how melodic it is. It's very soothing and pretty, and yet there's just something not quite right. <laughs> And it does have this sense where even as you listen to it, it feels like it's built on something that is suspect, so to speak. And especially when you play as 9S through root B and you find out from the commander that humanity has not been on the moon, but has been extinct this entire time, it really actually just sells the fact that everything that Yorha stands for, everything that 2B and 9S have been fighting for up to this point has been one big fat lie. And for 9S in particular, this is a big moment because he has really dedicated himself to the cause in the sense that he is very much a character that kind of just accepted his role and had a curiosity about his role but at the same time, he was one to question things. And so this creates, it definitely creates an issue for him in particular. And I just really enjoy that the bunker theme has this energy of where perfection is expected and the contrast between the theme for the bunker and the resistance camp, which is the true home base for 2B and 9S, and just the complete difference of how warm the uh, resistance camp feels, like the energy of the song, it's warm and comforting. And then the bunker, while it's still relaxing, it's cold. And it just feels like there's a distance between you and everyone that's on the bunker, especially because the actual color palette of the bunker is black and white and so it's very like sterile very clean but there is no real sense of peace it's just an illusion of peace because the theme while being melodic and peaceful it just ain't right because the setting is kind of off-putting and the energy of the place is slightly off-putting not so much where you can't find any comfort in the place but it's, it's more of a sense of familiarity rather than actual feeling of being at home and being safe and being at peace. So it's just really cool that the resistance camp and the bunker have these sort of contrasting themes that still have a relaxing vibe, but the actual tone and the energy and even the temperature of the tracks are completely different from one another. And that's very interesting, especially with the context of what the bunker actually symbolizes in the lives of our main characters. And I enjoy that very, very much. The next song we're going to talk about is called Vague Hope, Spring Grain. This song is one that I do like. It is really pretty. And for whatever reason, it just puts me in the mind of like Paris, for whatever reason. It just seems like something that you would hear in Paris. I don't know why, but that's how I feel about it. And I do like it. What is that sound outside? Hold on, you're ruining my groove. You threw, you threw off my groove. Now I got to start the whole song over again because this is take two. Like, come on people, could you not? I don't even know if the microphone picked that up, but I heard it and it disturbed me. And <sighs> hang on a second. See, a professional YouTuber 
would just do that all over again and never let you guys know that there was an editing hiccup to that degree, but we don't do things like that here. And again, I don't know why I'm saying we, I'm the only one here, but okay. Back to the song. Okay, so as I was saying about the song, it is very pretty. It is a nice song, but in terms of how it is implemented in the game, it's not really used at all. The only time that it's used is in the DLC for this one arena where the resistance androids were using machine life forms to kind of do their bidding and fight each other and making bets and all that to kind of like blow off steam and everything. And it's definitely a sad moment when you hear it and you're fighting against machines and they're kind of like talking to you and stuff and you know just kind of making you feel bad for fighting them but aside from that this song is not used in the game and even though it's pretty and you know definitely has this spring energy as per the name it's it doesn't resonate as well with me because it does it's not connected to a moment that I feel extremely strong about like you know if androids <laughs> got married and 2B and 9S got together and this was their wedding song I wouldn't mind then I'd be like oh yeah this is fantastic but that's but this track ain't used for for any sort of you know romantic or even like bittersweet moments between 2B and 9S it's just kind of there in this one unrelated DLC content and like, I do like this song, and again, it's pretty, and Amy Evans sounds wonderful. The fact that it's in a different key, it has this different energy, like, it's it's perfectly fine, but it's just, it doesn't have the same punch as Vague Hope, Cold Rain. I really enjoy the original Vague Hope so much, and it's just more dynamic, and this track is definitely, it's leaning toward a bittersweet tone, with some, like the way the instrumentation is, it kind of has this element of tragedy. So if it's still applied to 2B and 9S, it works, but I just don't like it as much. And again, it's not used for them. <laughs> like speaking of like the original Vague Hope, Vague Hope Cold Rain, it is used again in ending D, which is 9S's ending, which we'll get into. I think, maybe, I don't know if we'll actually get into it, but it's used after, uh, you know, the first part of his ending where the battle is ended and he's having this inner musing, Vague Hope Cold Rain is used. Now, if they had wanted to, they could have used Spring Rain and we could have further connected to this particular track, or really I should say me because I'm the one that's complaining about it, but... <laughs> It's just a shame because there are two particular moments where this version of Vague Hope could have been used. One of them is during 9S's ending where they used the original Vague Hope, which personally I prefer anyway, but you know, they could have used this one there. And they also could have used this track at the end of a particular side quest that focuses also on 9S. And again, we'll get to that probably going to talk about it this episode. We'll talk about that moment, but, but that's for later. I'll get to it. The point being, Vague Hope Spring Rain is a nice song. It's a very pretty song. I do like it. I do listen to it. It's nice. And it's actually a, a song that one of my friends really likes as well. But for me, it's Vague Hope Cold Rain all the way. Like, th this one just doesn't have the same punch for me. So... <laughs> So I don't mean to come across like negative for this song because it's pretty, it's gorgeous, but it just don't have the same punch to me. It just, it just doesn't hit me in my feels in the same way. And I guess it's, it's probably because it wasn't implemented in a way that it would really sink in for me because I'm a hopeless romantic and they only use this song for an unrelated DLC thing. And it just doesn't hit the same way. It just doesn't. It just doesn't. And I guess that's all I really need to say. 
it's a good song. It's fine. It's it's good. But and again, it's pretty. It like there's nothing actually wrong with the song. I just wish it were implemented in the game better because then I could connect to it more. But no, I I don't because it just isn't implemented well within the game, and I, I'm not happy about that because the core point of how this soundtrack has worked so far in my going through listening to it, I'm coming to more and more realizations about how well implemented this soundtrack was within the context of the game and its story and all of that good stuff. And then you hit me with the one track that just isn't implemented properly or hardly at all. And it just makes me angry because like I said, the soundtrack is so good and most of it has been implemented to such, like it's been implemented really, really well. And then just this one song that is really pretty and deserves more recognition because of how pretty it is and how well Emmy Evans sings it and the way it's composed and all that. And it just doesn't work because it's only used in DLC. Like that, when you had two perfectly good moments where you could have used this version of the track. Like, no, that just, I'm mad, I don't work myself up. We're gonna move on to the next track now because I'm angry now, doggone it. Why? Why did you not implement this track properly? Well, the next song should boost my mood. We're going to cover Song of the Ancients, Atonement. Now, this song in particular definitely invokes a nostalgic vibe for me because Automata is the first near game that I played, the first game, you know, by Yoko Taro. And like, this was one of the first songs that I heard. And I'm, I love this version of Song of the Ancients, even though it is not my absolute favorite version of this track, it is very nostalgic for me. I do love it because it in part is what introduced me to Nier Automata in the first place. And like I've said in the past, Nier Automata is without question my favorite game that I've ever played. And part of the reason is because of its music. And so hearing this song that is also a part of the original Nier is just a wonderful treat. I'm sure that when this game was first released and you know, this particular arrangement for Song of the Ancients was in the game. I'm sure that those who had played the original Nier in 2010 were just so happy and excited to have this piece of this other game that meant so much to them within Automata. It is just a great, like, it, like within a song, it's a great little love note to those who loved the original Nier. Like, it's just fantastic. And I definitely really love this version of the track, primarily for the nostalgia that it invokes in me, for the person that I was in 2017, <laughs> you know, during that particular time in my life. It was just a great time in my life. And so this song kind of makes me nostalgic, even though it is like, it's just a really good hype song, even though there are elements of sadness to it. And I just, I love this track and I love it more now than I even did back then because now I have all the context for Devila and Popola from the original Nier and how their story applies to the Devila and Popola that we see in Nier Automata since they are different characters and whatnot. And it's just great. I can't say that I really have anything more to say about it. Even like musically, I don't have a whole lot to say. I do love those violins, I will say that. I love the violins, I love, you know, how percussive this is in the sense that it definitely just has like this really strong rhythm and I enjoy it. It's it's good and it makes me happy. <laughs> it definitely has lifted up my mood since the previous song got me angry. <laughs> so I'm, I, I love this song and I just love what it represents that this is, this is the near song. It's like, it's the song that kind of appears to some degree. I'm not sure if it appears in near reincarnation. It should, if it hasn't yet. But <laughs> this to me is the near song, Song of the Ancients. This is the song that kind of represents everything about near. 
And so all the different iterations of Song of the Ancients, they all kind of carry that same energy. It's This is just the theme for Nier. It, this is the song. <laughs> and, and I love it. It's great. It's just full of beautiful emotions. And even though this version is definitely more of a hype song and, you know, just a strictly like a battle theme with less emotional power than say the original version of it or even the version that appears in Replicate. Like I do really like this version a lot because again, it's what introduced me to this soundtrack, to this game. Because I was just, I remember being so excited kind of just waiting for this game primarily because I had heard like just this little piece of this song from the demo and like I wanted to play the demo I played the demo and then when it came out here in the states I bought it like day one because I just had so much fun with the demo I played it twice and <laughs> this it, it just brings back memories and I'm just so happy <laughs> that I found this game I love this game so much and I love that I can talk about it in this way but anywho uh, let's move on to uh, the next track that I'm going to talk about. Now, the next track in the actual official soundtrack is called Blissful Death, but I'm actually going to save that for next time. So the track that we're going to talk about now is one that isn't on the official soundtrack, but is used in the game. We're going to talk about Kaine Salvation and how it is used in Near Automata. Now. Oh wait, I just realized I need to be listening to the track. <laughs> Hang on a second. Again, professionals would have just cut that out, but not me. And doggone it, why is the phone ringing? I uh... No, I'm not cutting that out either because doggone it, why are you why are you people calling me? You call every day. I know it's a telemarketer, don't you? Y'all quit messing with me today. Just sounds from outside, people drive it all loud, and now the telephone, I know you can hear that because it's right here in this room. Dunk on it, why are you doing this? Just stop playing with me. Okay, so Kaine Salvation. <sighs> this song, if you have played the original Nier, has a very strong meaning. Kaine is a character who is very brash and rough on the surface, you know, has the mouth that sailors would blush at <laughs> and just you know, can be a very abrasive character, but her theme in contrast is not only melodic and pretty, but it just contains this sort of just heavy sadness and showcases that Kaine does have a softer side, but is unable to really express that. So that's the context for the original Nier. Now, how is that used in Automata? Well, in Automata, there is a quest that you, uh, can play as either uh, 2B or 9S, so you can play it in either Route A or B, where Emil has you gather some memories of his to look for lunar tears. And when he, when you find all the lunar tears, you go to this area uh, that's hidden beneath the commercial facility. And in this space is a whole field of lunar tears. And presumably this little space beneath the commercial facility uh, is kind of reminiscent of Kaine's house, the place where she used to live. And this place is very symbolic of the original Nier and of Emile's connection to Kaine. Now, how does that relate to the characters within this game? Well. We're gonna fast forward to Route C, and I am going to give a major spoiler now. So if y'all been sticking around uh, from beforehand, now's the time to probably go. Because essentially, at the beginning of Route C, after the battles have gone down, after Yorha has been destroyed, uh, 2B and 9S get separated, and in that separation, 2B gets infected by a logic virus, and while infected, she comes across A2 and she requests that A2 kill her because she is infected and, you know, without the bunker around, 2B can't just load her data back up into a new body. So in this case, death is now permanent. 
And so A2 kills 2B and 9S just happens to appear at the exact second when A2 stabs 2B. And so he contextualizes it as, uh, as A2 just murdering 2B. And so that makes for a very uh, complicated issue for him in particular. The thing being with this situation is that after losing 2B, which was essentially the last person he had a connection to, and after finding out that Yorha in general was built on a lie, he has essentially lost everything. And so one of the very first quests that you can pick up if you choose to play as 9S immediately after that event uh, is a quest called Gathering Keepsakes. And at the end of this quest, after you've completed the tasks of finding the dog tags of this resistance member's teammates and bringing them back to this guy, you can go into the uh, elevator at the commercial facility and go down to where this field of Lunar Tears is and 9S will go and leave a marker for 2B and will say that don't worry I will be with you before long and I hope that you're at peace is essentially what he says and so this song is what is playing in the background in this field and I do really believe that this song was definitely the best choice for this moment because it, it connects like Emile's tragedy in the sense that he is the only one still left from the events of the previous near. And even Emil himself is kind of like a broken iteration of himself. Like the Emil that we see in Automata technically isn't the same Emil from the previous game because he split himself into so many different personalities just to combat the threat of the aliens. And so this place, this field of lunar tears is his only reminder, his only connection to the people that he loved and cared about the most. And so for 9S going into this place and leaving a marker for 2B is essentially him like making this sort of symbolic gesture that this person was the person that he cared about and loved the most and that this place held a special memory for them because you know it's a field of lunar tears and it's beautiful and it's mystical and for the two of them going there at the same time they're they were both kind of like wow this is a really pretty place and so any memory of 2b for 9s is precious and so that is why he has kind of recontextualized this area as 2b's resting place now, I will say that this probably would have been a good spot for uh, Vague Hope Spring Rain to play. This, if, if it was going to play anywhere, it could have played here. But because of the fact that the setting for this place is the Field of Lunar Tears and it has Kaine's theme playing, and they didn't really have another scenic place where 9S could have this moment of you know saying goodbye to 2B essentially and you know essentially telling what in his mind he perceives as her spirit or whatnot you know telling her that you know don't worry you won't be alone for much longer and, and all of that you know it just it just reveals <laughs> so much uh, about how he is feeling and what he is thinking in the aftermath of what happened to 2B and just recontextualizes his actions moving forward and so I feel that this theme best conveys the energy that 9S is carrying into this place anyway. So, you know, Vague Hope Spring Rain probably wouldn't have fit as well anyway. But since I consider Vague Hope to be a 9S's song, if, if there had been another location where 9S could have gone to have this moment that was just as scenic and beautiful as this area, then that song would have been the best one to pick since it's kind of their song. <laughs> um, but otherwise, Kaine's Salvation, as it is used in Nier Automata, is extremely effective, especially in this moment. Like, it's a tearjerker moment. And all of you who have played the game and you've played through this particular quest, in some ways, it's kind of like, why is it a side quest? 
why is it you know potentially missable because again it just recontextualizes 9s's feelings at this particular point in the story and kind of gives a really strong idea about what he intends to do and why and it's just fantastic and uh, it's mm, 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 mm. so anywho uh, I believe <laughs> this is a good place to stop because I've been talking for about 40 minutes now and I try not to go over like 30-ish minutes with these so I've already gone kind of over because I've been rambling a little more than usual so I just want to say to all of you who are watching thank you so much for watching I really enjoy talking about near automata soundtrack I enjoy just talking about this game and expounding upon my thoughts and feelings about this game and it's been very helpful for me in a dark time and so I just want to say that I appreciate you guys for watching and I appreciate the fact that you guys have allowed me to just kind of speak my mind about Nier Automata. I appreciate it and I appreciate all of you and uh, for those of you who may be new to this series, if you like this series and want to see me do this type of series for other games, uh, definitely let me know in the comment section. Leave a like on this video or subscribe. Uh, I have several different games in mind for doing something similar to this. I, I, I haven't decided just yet, but if you guys have any suggestions, you're free to do so. And yeah, I think that's all I need to say. And I just want to say thank you all. God bless you all. And I hope you all have a fantastic day. And, you know, just keep moving forward. And no matter what life throws at you, just continue to uh, have hope for the future. So God bless you guys. Thank you again for watching. Love you. Mwah.